Hello everybody, I'm Michelangelo Badio, and we're going to check this, make sure that I am, everybody's online, okay, cool. I have a monitor in the background. Uh, we have one minute to go, it's almost six. Chicago time, seven New York time, four o'clock California time. So we are, uh, hello everybody. Hey, how's it going? I see somebody has a ticket for my Seattle show. Hopefully we all, I'm on the road. That's all I can tell you. Uh, Diana, hello. Alexis, hello. Uh, let's see, I don't know him. Larry, cool. All right, we're, uh, I'm just waiting to kind of see. I, I want to make sure I have a monitor in the background for uh to see all these questions because i it's hello from puerto rico hey brett how are you denny how are you okay we are getting everything organized here okay i guess my other computer like i said i have a big monitor behind this but it's not booting up very good hey brett again uh and then i want to say uh let's see hello to alexis again and uh Denny and James, and there's a lot of people watching already. Okay, now. Can everybody hear that good? Somebody just post. Hey, Jay. I know, Jay. All right. Uh, Roberto, come on, computer. What the heck is going on here? All right. Slow. Slowness. Okay, anyway. I'm not going to worry about it. I can, uh, I'll, if I go like this, you can see my eyes are deep blue, but also it means I'm reading questions. I can, uh, hey, Alice, how are you? Bobby? Okay, anyway, so everything's going great here. I just wanted to have this monitor in the background so that when all the questions fly in, okay, it sounds great. Okay, cool. Now, I want to talk... Hey, Nick, how are you? I want to talk about alternate picking versus economy. And there's a couple other things I, I want to discuss in uh, today's class. Uh, we are going to do the workshop again uh, in July. We're really sorry about last week. Uh, you know, the best intentions sometimes get screwed up with software problems! We had everything set, and then it was just like a software meltdown. Uh, we just couldn't get the audio, and it was perfect like five minutes before. So things happen. But you know what we did? The show went on. The shred continues. So let me talk a little bit about alternate picking versus economy. Now, if you've been watching these guitar lessons, the one thing that I hope that you get out of this well, first of all, I'm not a politician. I don't preach anything other than music. But I am unlike a lot of uh, other teachers in that I am completely unbiased when it comes to techniques. I love them all. They're beautiful, baby, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. I love them all. Um, I don't think one technique is better than another. I don't think one style of music is better than another. I'm human. Maybe more machine than man, but I'm human. And, and so I have preferences, certain things I like, certain things I don't like, but I'm not here to be a judge to tell you what to listen to, what's cool, what's not cool. And this is the difference between the way I teach and a, a lot of other teachers, because there's, there's a reason to. After touring in 58 countries, seeing so much of this world. I could, you know, I should be one of the guys on the news uh, telling you about what I've seen. You want to talk about China? I'm the first artist ever to be on communist Chinese TV. I think I know a little bit about China. I know a lot more than, than the people talking about it on television, unless they've been there as many times as I have, which probably most of them haven't. See, prognosticators 
and and people whose opinions they're just so opinionated are not that much of interest to me uh because a lot of times it's just it's a bias in their head like they get they it's like they get this thing in their head that well this person's really cool but like this person ain't cool and like well that's cool but that's not cool so, yes everybody has that but when it comes to instruction, teaching music, it doesn't matter if I like something and you don't, or you like something and I don't. I'm not here to tell you about that. I'm here to say, these are the techniques. Each one of them has value to play a particular part in a particular piece of music. It is not up to me to be the judge of how you use it or what style of music you use it in. I'm going to try one more time to get this big monitor to work. It's like frozen. Okay, come on, Facebook. We know you can do it. We know you can do it. You know what it is? It's frozen on my page, and it ain't going anywhere. Okay, anyway, so I'll just read from here. Now, this is why I'm saying this about economy picking versus alternate. I'm going to give a very simple definition of alternate picking. Watch this. Okay, you can do this. But one hand back and forth, back and forth. This is alternate picking. Now, Joey, this is Joey Hallow. Um, Joey sometimes does questions for me in workshops. Hey, how do you do alternate picking so fast? That's an excellent question, Joey. I'm glad you asked that. Here's what I've learned. When you go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, it's like running, okay? Nobody runs with down like this. Two, okay. Uh, somebody is blowing up my phone here. Okay, when you are uh, playing in the technique known as alternate picking, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, no matter where you go, that's it. Now, here's the interesting thing. On a guitar, there and on everything, there's either even or odd number of notes that, that you can play. On an even number of notes, the picking sequence from string to string, down up, is always going to, if you start on a down stroke, on a riff, and you go to a new string using an even amount of notes, two notes, four notes, even six notes, but that's not that common. Uh, but two notes, four notes, you are going to hit a new string on a down stroke. Why? Down, up, new string down. Or down, up, down, up, new string down. But if you are playing three notes per string or divisible by metal, two plus two is metal four minus metal one. That's three. See, we never... And we take away. You know what that means? The mosh pit could start out with 100 people, but it's going to end up at about 46. Because we take them out! So 2 plus 2 is metal 4 minus 1. Metal 3. So what am I saying? When you have an odd number of notes on a string, three notes per string, or even one in your alternate picking, the next string will be an upstroke. That is the alternate picking killer. That is why if you go to metalmethod.com, speed kills, speed kills works. My instructional programs are selling through the roof right now. You know why? Because I practice what I preach. I'm the, I'm Uncle Mike and I'm telling you this. I'm Preacher Mike. Uh, okay, Pastor Mike. Whatever you want to say when it comes to music only, only music. I don't talk about anything else. What I say is true. What I practice is correct. My knowledge from my degree in music, but I'm always a student, so I always talk about this stuff, and I always read about it. I'm constantly reading about music and about how things have changed since I've gone to the university and got my degree. But when you do down, up, down, three notes per string, your next string's going to be an upstroke. I talk about this extensively in my Speed Kill series. Just get Speed Kills that's very advanced, but I describe it in a very easy way. Now, when you are playing, let's use a practical application of this. Now, I'm going to turn the uh, 
I'm going to I'm going to turn the the camera down so you can see my guitar a little better here. Okay, I hope it doesn't fall. Okay, do you see this? Now watch. Now, always in these lessons, I have my guitar up like this, which isn't the normal way to play. It's like, hello, hello. Boy, I'm very close to my guitar. Like, I feel kind of a like a personal thing to it. But here's how I can do The exercise like this. So what I'm trying to say is that exercises like that are shown in abundance in my Speed Kills program. But let me tell you this, alternate picking is an amazing technique. I mean, it, it's like, you know, I used to say Rambo. It's like, it's like a big gun with a lot of bullets. That's alternate picking. just feel mean playing it. It's like, it gives you this feel. It's like, yes, when I'm playing live and I'm just tearing up, I'm going, yeah. It's like, it's like, it is being in a Lamborghini. It's like, you're going 300 kilometers an hour. It's like, it's, it's fast. It feels amazing. Now, economy picking. This is the biggest difference to people who don't understand economy picking. You know, in the beginning when I went, okay, now here is economy picking. It is a different concept and it is amazing. Okay, see, there are people who don't like alternate picking, who only like economy picking. There are people who don't like economy picking and only like alternate picking. Why? Did one of them hurt you? Did you date an economy picking person? And, and did they break up with you? Did, did you, did you have a, a bad experience with alternate picking? Like, Oh, very bad. Like, it, it was very bad. They've been a bad person. Why? It doesn't matter. It's like, oh, I don't do three bar pressures. Oh, they're so passe. Shut up. Who cares what you think? Learn the technique. People who are jaded in their head don't learn. If they, if they think, if we, I like to call it absolute truths. Like the, you know, and again, I, they're prognosticators. And that, that means, you know, pundits. You know, these people on the news. Oh, well, this is this, and oh, this is this. And then you find out a year later they're completely wrong because they just like to hear themselves talk. Okay, when it, and I like to hear myself talk too. But what I'm saying about music is something that I'm deeply passionate about and I know a lot about. When you do economy picking, let's, when you do two notes per string, again, an even number, it's going to be the same. Down, up, or down, up, down, up, twos or fours on one string, two or four on one string. But when you go to a new string, this is where economy picking is completely different. On even numbers of notes, it's the same as alternate picking. But on odd numbers of notes, it is so different. And this is where the beauty of knowing these techniques, one is not better than the other. You need both. It's like, it's what I've said a million times. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And I've also said this a number of times. I know Frank Gambale, kind of like the one who popularized economy picking. I think he's a brilliant guitar player, but I also think El Di Miola is a brilliant guitar player. And see, Frank does not a, a big proponent of alternate picking, where I completely disagree with that. But he said one thing about economy picking. Well, he said a lot of things, but one thing that I really agree with him, economy picking is like a fifth gear you can actually play faster using economy picking than alternate. And that's a hard thing for Mr. Michelangelo Badia to say because I love alternate picking. It's like, I love that sound, like bullets in the gun. I love that. But when, once I really started to work on economy picking and understand it and apply it, I was like, it's the bomb. It's the bomb, bro. I mean, 
It's like, yeah, it rocks, dude. And so here's what I can tell you. Two notes per string, two notes, or four notes, that's two plus two divisible by metal. That will be the same as alternate. But if you have two plus two is metal four, minus one, metal three. If you have three notes per string, instead of alternate, down, up, down, new string, up, down, up, it's down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down. This is profound because it allows you to be able to, for example, I'm going to play the same riff. I showed this in Speed Kills. Here, here is alternate picking. I'm going to back up a little. Now, the reason I'm, I'm playing it like this, because I mostly do this in economy. See, I went like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I don't even play it like that anymore. That's the first time I've played it like that in a long time. I use economy picking because the name economy is the way it sounds. It's economical. And so instead of going down, up, down, up, down, like down, up, down, up, down, up, you can play it like that, which I do, but I found using economy picking down, up, down, down, up, up. See, one exercise I showed on Speed Kills can help you develop economy picking. Now, I'm gonna show this the way I normally play it, which is using economy picking. I use economy picking a lot, especially as I've gotten older. I've realized that there's so many passages that are so easy to play with economy. That doesn't mean I like alternate any less. It means I have choices, and those choices allow me to be the player that I am still after all these years. Now here, watch. Down, up, down, down, up, up. See how fast I can play that? That's how I normally play it. It's light speed. And so when you use economy picking, remember, and this is the world according to Mike, one's not better than another. And I make fun of people who cut down techniques and cut down other artists. You know why? It's stupid. Because look at, look at it this way. Here's the world according to Michael. If somebody is doing really well online, or, or, you know, record sales or all, you know, numbers. What are they doing to captivate an audience? So now you not, might, might not like what they do. That's a personal preference, okay? That's, that's, um, that's something that's subjective. That's, you know, I don't like every song that every artist has done. But that's, that's something that every human has. But I respect anybody who goes out there and does it and lays it on the line and puts something out there because it's going to open you to some criticism. And criticism is good because if you have all, even, you know, it, you know if you're a believer in, in God, and this is not a religious thing, but let's say God puts out a YouTube video. You're going to get like 99% likes, but somebody's going to go, I hate his voice, bro. Like that video is cheesy, man. Uh, this sucks, dude. It sucks. And so, so you know, nobody's going to get 100%. But just know that you're in good company when this happens. So, with alternate picking, alternate picking is, I, I love the sound of it. I just love that. <laughs> But I love, I love economy picking too because you can kick it up that one gear. If, for example, if I'm playing alternate picking. Now I'm going to switch to economy. It 
just is so fast and it's so clear. And that's the thing that I love about it. Okay, hang on one second, everybody. This, I had this big screen in the background so I could read questions. It ain't working! So anyway, um, but the point is very simple. Learn everything you can. Keep an open mind. Remember, one is not better than the other. One technique could possibly help you play a riff that you normally couldn't play. When you think in terms like this, it's not like, you know, see, I, I mean, you don't know how many times I've had people write, oh, like, oh, like our precious are like, oh, totally passe. Tell Jeff Loomis about that. You know, it's like, no, that's ridiculous. It is not passe, it's a technique, dude, or dudette. Get it in your head, you're passe. Because that's why I'm, I have a very low tolerance. And, and if you notice on my pages, I, it's very difficult for me to comment because I have the world according to Michael, which it is so unbiased when it comes to music and the, and the teaching that when I, when I read biases on either way, you know, this is great, this sucks. Uh, you know, yeah, I like the great ones, but the ones that say, oh, this is not right. I don't want to bother with it because... I don't, I don't like to comment because when I do, it always comes off like, you know, that I, I'm quick on my feet. I, I'll just say this. I am. And, and I don't want to come off like some condescending jerk like people who like to post. And, and, and so what I do is I don't post at all and, or I'll delete it. These, these are my pages. They're not a democracy. I, you can say what you want about me or my music or anything on another page, but don't come to my house and do it, you know, and, but I am trying to tell you, this is why speed kills works. Go to metalmethod.com. I have 13 instructional programs. Um, one of the things that I, uh, that I, I've got the gift for, I love to teach guitar because I love to help you, but you know why I like to help you so much? Because it's actually helped me too. It's a little bit self-serving because if I can give you the best explanation and the most honest, detailed, and simplistic approach that I can, even the complex ideas and complex techniques, and it helps you, and it's proven to be true over the years because I've been around a long time, it helps me understand what I do as a player. And that is critical to my longevity. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple things here. I'm using a sawtooth guitar. Let's see, uh, what's my insight about pick slanting? Okay, you have to slant your pick. Uh, you know, people say, you know, why slant pick? I'm going to get very close to the camera here and show you. Now watch. I slant the pick down. There is a word in music called chiff. Chiff is, this is great. Think of an old fashioned pipe organ with those gigantic pipes, okay? Chiff is the sound of air being pushed into the pipe. That's like, there, there, is, there are parts to a note. There's the attack, there's the decay, the sustain, the release. Okay, so there are different parts of a note that describe an entire note from the time you pluck it or strike it or hit it to the time it actually resonates and decays and dies. Okay, so you have to have your pick on a slant. The word is chiff. It's that initial attack. If you play with a pick parallel to the strings, in other words, the same direction, you're going to sound kind of wimpy. You're going to sound like... It's going to be too wimpy! Great players in every kind of instrument attack. Even when they're slow. They play hard. They play aggressive. Either pick slanted downwards or upwards. Does not matter. Does not matter. The greats do it, all of them. If you want to be great, follow the greats. They do it, I do it. And so there's just no other way. Do it. 
Just like, you know, when I talk about uh, holding a pick, you know, Steve Morse held it with two fingers, but guess what? I love Steve Morse. He had a very serious, he, he has hand problems. Um, he doesn't use, he's older, he's a little bit older than me, but, but see, he played with a technique and he played so many shows. I played thousands and thousands of shows. Not many people have played more shows than me. Not the Metallicas, not Steve Morse. Uh, you know, I have toured and toured and toured. So you're not going to really, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I, there has to be, you know, people who have done more shows than me. But I'm in an elite class of about the top musicians of all time touring. Uh, I mean, even earlier this year before COVID hit, I did over 40 shows by the time March 1st came along. I tour and I tour and I tour. I'm going to be touring later this year. And the reason why I say that, Steve Morse got hurt. A lot of people get hurt because they don't understand and follow their own body, economy of motion. Why sometimes economy will be better for you than alternate picking? Why adjusting things? You know, it's like I'm a big fan of Phil Jackson from uh, that. He was a coach of the Chicago Bulls when Jordan won six championships. I think he won five with the Lakers. He also won as a player on the Knicks. And they wouldn't allow him to coach in the NBA. And he won a championship in Canada. And he is the, the coach that's really attributed to the modern school of coaching where you don't berate the players and criticize. You suck! You did this! Because that's really kind of the way it was for a long time until Phil Jackson came along. But Phil Jackson said a very profound thing about Michael Jordan. He said, see, Michael Jordan split his career up into two. He won three championships. I'm from Chicago, so I know this stuff. I like sports, okay? I don't watch it as much now, but I used to love it. And, and even when I was touring as much, I would only get to watch the playoffs or like the Super Bowl. I mean, I'm always touring. But Jordan won three championships in a row with the Chicago Bulls. Retired, went into baseball, and he found out he wasn't that great in baseball, but, you know, still give him credit for, for doing it. But then he went back to basketball and won three others. Two plus two is metal four minus metal one. Three. What does this have to do with guitar and life a lot. Check this out. Phil Jackson, they, they used to call him the Zen master because he was brilliant in the head. He understood not only what players go through, he was a player. He won a championship as a player. It's like me touring. I've been on major labels. I have a brand new record that came out on a really great label. I'm a major label guy, so and I've toured all over the planet for 30 years. So when I tell you something, and I'm still here playing at a high level, I don't look super old for my age, I can tell you from experience. That's what Phil Jackson did. And here's what he said that can help you. He said, you know, Michael Jordan, you are not the player that can slam dunk and, and, you know, Air Jordan, the guy that can fly, you know, three meters or, you know, 12 feet from the ground to the hole, you know, to the hoop and dunk a basket. He said, you have to adjust your game as you get older. So what did Jordan do? Instead of being this player that could like outdo everything, he developed a shot called a fadeaway where he would dribble, he would back up, <laughs> swish right in. He developed a shot that didn't amount to him exerting such energy all the time going to the hole, meaning going to the basket. He adjusted his game. What do you think I've done as I've gotten older? I've adjusted my game. That's the longevity. When you are a player using economy picking versus alternate, or say alternate versus economy, is adjusting your game. You adjust your game to be the best you you can be. That's what it's about. So I found out, like when I was playing this alternate figure, I'm like, that sucks. That's actually kind of, that's not the way I do it. That's not the way I do it economy. It's so fast, I don't need to do it alternate. But if I'm gonna play a riff like this. I do it alternate. Now there's one disadvantage to economy. It's a very interesting thing. See, alternate picking, if you can do it, 
You can move anywhere on the neck and it will always work. Okay, who did this? Okay, hey, Susan, how are you? I love all the hearts. That's great. Um, when you are playing with alternate picking, you can go anywhere because you're just running. It's like, like playing bongos. You know, it's like Joey, just going like this. See, economy picking, he can't do economy. He can only do alternate. Hey, how y'all doing? I thought, you know, I want to interview myself. <laughs> I want Joey, hey, okay, you came up with this thing called the over-under. It's like, it's like Garfield goose. This is like a hand goose. And so I got to tell you guys this story. I'm going to, I have to digress this. Okay. I used to wear this thing called like a fisherman's hat. It's like a Greek fisherman's hat. It looks like it's really cool, like a captain's hat, like Chips Enough wears these all the time. Okay, so I was driving from L.A., into the Redlands to see Wayne Charvel. Wayne Charvel, if you know, from Charvel Guitars, he built the only Gibson double for me. He built the quad guitar in Nitro. I have these in my collection. The quad got stolen. But anyway, so I was going to visit Wayne. Now, now the Redlands is a long way from uh, L.A. It's about 90 miles, or if people from Europe, it's about literally 150 kilometers, almost exactly. Okay, I know, I know the metric system really well. So I'm driving, right? Now, they have that carpool lane, which is like the diamond lane. I'm driving, and I'm going over an overpass, and I see a super long road of stopped cars. There's like, and I can see there's cops at the very, an accident. I, I couldn't really tell. It was too far. It was way off. It was like a couple kilometers away, over a mile away. So I'm driving down the overpass. I'm like, and I'm listening, you know, to... Uh, you know, nobody's fool, though. No. You know, I'm listening to, like, KNEC, right? I'm rocking, you know, docking, breaking the chain, that, that, you know, or I'm, I'm listening to basically this on the radio. Right. So I'm listening to this right rocking. And, you know, I mean, that was the, the era. And all of a sudden, traffic is stopping. But the diamond lane, the, the carpool lane was free. So I take my hat off and I put it on Joey. <laughs> because you can only have two people. You have to have two or more in this lane or else it's a massive ticket. So anyway, so here's me. I'm passing. I got a hat on Joey. And like Joey's just looking around and I'm driving. This is for sure, real. And I'm driving like this. I got the hat on. And all of a sudden, I'm, I mean, I'm passing hundreds of cars. Just, oh, yeah. You know, listening to Green Melodies. And Joey's like. So anyway, so I'm driving, listening, you know, to music. I'm rocking out. And all of a sudden, I see a bunch of police cars. And they look at me and I'm like. <laughs> and Joey's like, like hey! And all, and all of a sudden the cop goes, pull over! I had to pull over. I'm like, oh, I'm busted, man. I'm totally busted. So I rolled down my window. The cop's like, you know, and so I go like this. And Joey's like this. And he goes, you're in the carpool lane. I'm like, and he goes, what's that? I go, that's Joey. <laughs> and the guy looks at me, and I got a hat on my little guy here, and he's like, get out of here. So anyway, Joey saved the day, and he stopped me from a hundreds of dollar ticket. So anyway, Joey's been a friend of mine for a long time, but it's a real story, especially when I rolled down the window, and I'm like this. And Joey's like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm treating him like he's a real person, and he's looking at the cop with this hat, I'm like, wow. What do you want? And so this is my carpool friend. And uh, the cop let me go. He starts laughing. He goes, get the hell out of here. <laughs> it was great. And uh, I loved it. But getting back to economy picking and all the other stuff. Economy is something to adjust your game. See, you have to know your own body. And I talked about this with hand injuries. But you have to know your mind. You have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. But you have to know your own body. If you don't know your own body, your body will tell you if it hurts, don't do it. Like my friend Rob said a few uh, of these uh, workshops ago. But if you work on alternate picking, and here's what I was saying before. Economy picking has a major flaw that alternate does not have. 
alternate, if you can do it, you can go, I've done it a million times, sixth string to first string and back and forth. I mean, you can, you can string skip up. You can do all sorts of stuff with alternate picking, but economy picking has one flaw, and it doesn't mean it's less of a technique. The sequence of notes has to work. In other words, not everything works comfortably with economy picking. When you watch Frank and Bali's instructional programs, like playing a major scale, he creates a pattern where it allows him to backtrack. In other words, instead of playing like a major scale, just going like this. <laughs> He does it like this. Right there. Because it lends itself to using economy picking to go back down. And see, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy using both. Because limitations of one can be overcome by using another. And that's that simple. That's why you have multiple techniques to overcome any kind of obstacle that you might encounter when you're playing. So that is that. That's, and again, I can't stress this enough. Metalmethod.com. Get speed kills. Speed kills works. My instructional programs are amazing. They're thought out. They're methodical, and the methodology has stood the test of time. They work. Now, I want to talk about a couple other things here, too. Um, I have a tour coming up um, in the United States. We've got about 25 shows booked. It's going. We have an amazing meet and greet, and I'm doing something a little different in this new meet and greet. We're going to have, I'm going to have two amps. I only had one the last time. It's going to be the MAB Jam. We're going to get people. Now, we only have 10 slots per meet and greet. And, and so for VIP meet and greets. And so we are going to, and most of them were sold out the last tour. We're going to have 10 slots and we're going to be able to have several guitars play at the same time. See, we didn't do, I didn't do that the last time, but I want to make it different. My VIP meet and greets are something that you really shouldn't miss if you're a guitar player. If you're a young guitar player, I can give you insights that can help your playing for the rest of your life. If you're an older guitar player and you have some doubts about, you know, I hear this all the time. Hey man, I'm like 40 years old and, you know, you know I'm married and I've got kids and a job, well, you know, and I, I really respect that. And, I mean, you know, it's amazing. And then, but, you know, uh, you know, I was told that I can't do this after a certain age. Really? Moi. I can do it. So you can. See, guitar is, is a lot of it's learned. A lot of it, you know, yes, you have to have natural talent, but I'll pick a person who has less talent and more drive and ambition and a positive attitude any day over a talented person that thinks they're so good that they don't have to learn anything new. And so, not that you have to make that choice. You know, it's like I see these memes like, some people are good at school, some people are good at life. And then they show the dude in the Lamborghini with all the hot chicks. Wrong. Yes, that is true, but wrong in the big picture. You know what? Some people are good at both. And those people are scary. You don't just have to have one or the other. See, that's the whole thing. Divide and conquer. Divisions will get you conquered. If you think, oh, if I go to school, then I'm never going to have this Lamborghini. But if I'm like a student of life, well, yeah, okay, there's a lot of millionaires that did. I'm not saying you have to go to school, but don't berate the people who do. I'm a perfect example, a college graduate and really successful at life. Why? Because I don't look at one side or the other. I'm not, this isn't like life, college. Oh, it's not that. It's life, college. Why not? Now, not everybody's good at that. There are some people that have degrees that, that are, are teachers, but that have never experienced the real world. And then they put their jaded thoughts to other students. That's bad. Okay? But I can't help that. Um, but 
Do not discount the people who have intelligence, who have worked to go to school, and are also good at life. That's a dangerous combination. I've got it. And, and so, I mean, I've lived through a lot. I mean, I'm, you know, Christmas isn't so fun for me anymore when I don't have my mom, I don't have my dad, I don't have my younger sister, I've got no immediate family, I can't even have a dog anymore because I travel so much. And, and so, now, am I making excuses? No. But, you know, don't tell me about life. I've experienced life. I know what it's like to lose people, to lose things, and, and to have to overcome a lot. Okay, so so I don't need to be told in a meme that, oh, this and this. See, that's not my philosophy. My philosophy is you can be good at either one or both. There's no law that says it's one or the other. That's the thing that, that that's different about the way I think. It's not one or the other. Why not use both to your advantage? Okay, and it's just like I said in alternate picking. Do I love alternate <laughs> I love them. Do I love sweet duck? I love sweep technique. I also love economy picking. I love it. I mean, listen to that. It's a blur, and that's only one riff, and I show that in Speed Kills. And so, this is my methodology. This is the methodology of orchestral musicians. Learn them all. One is not better than the other. That's the methodology. That's what I teach. And because of my music theory background and my educational background, I was able to bring into my lesson programs thoughts of centuries that have worked. And that's why, see, like I've actually, unfollowed a bunch of these. Uh, I, I love to see success stories, but when I started seeing that, that people equate success, it's like in politics, you know, it's so divided right now. But this isn't politics, it's music. We're not divided in music. I always say that if musicians ran the world, we would have world peace, because we understand. Oh, you like jazz? Cool. But I play rock? Cool. Oh, you play rock, but you like jazz? Cool. So what? Big deal! You know, oh, you're, you have a degree in music, but, but you've toured all over the planet and you have real life experience. I say I have two college degrees. One from Northeastern University, two from Rock and Roll University. I know what it's like to go to Los Angeles to try to make it in music in the 80s. I came there with $3,000. Two months later, I was $3,000 less than what I came out there with. And, and and my grandfather helped me. My mom said, don't ask your grandfather for money. I was like, mom, I need some money to go there. And so, and I, I had a great job. I had my own lesson business in Chicago. I was doing sessions. It was either this, I'm gonna go to LA to be a rock star, or I'm gonna buy a house and get a vet. And, and so, and what I did was, um, before I left, I, I, I had decided for about a year that I was going to move to California. And because that was the music mecca. And so I invested a lot of money in things that, uh, you know, didn't give me liquidity and cash, but I had tangible things, tangible assets. And so when I went out to California, I literally just put $3,000 in an account. Now, back then, that was a lot of money, you know, maybe six, eight grand. But that's not, a, I thought that would last me long enough. It, it didn't last at all. It was gone. LA is expensive. And, and so, I, I went through five bands after one year. And, and, and then I had the studio company that I used to do, TV commercials. They flew me home to Chicago just to do a United Airlines commercial. I was so good at my job in Chicago. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I can't make it in LA. I'm thinking I was really down. I had no money. We had to move out of the place. I went through all these different places to live. I was sleeping on the floor of a person, I don't even remember their name. I mean, I had nothing, no car, no money. I had two guitars, one Marshall half stack, that's all I had. And, and I had a suitcase of clothes and they weren't even cool. I looked like a Geico insurance salesman. And so, and I'm thinking to myself, I can't do it, man. I just, you know, I, I was really dejected. I had nothing. I, I, I'm literally sleeping on a floor. I, I had nowhere to go. 
and, and my parents weren't rich. You know, it's like I wasn't born in this rich family. And, and, and I'm thinking, man, I got to go home. I gotta, I've got to go back to Chicago. And so I call my dad, and I'm like, Dad, I don't know about L.A. And he goes, son. He goes, uh, a guy named Joey Setner called. Now, Joey Setner was a bass player. And he was from Chicago, and he said he's in L.A., and he's in this band called Howlin'. So anyway, the moral of the story is this. Right before it looks the darkest, right before, this is the first time in, in my life I, I had experienced something where I'm, I'm thousands of miles away from what I know. I've got nothing. I had nothing. And, and I, I said to myself, I either could go home and be super successful, which I already was, and I was planning on, and then something happened. I stuck it out long enough. Part of it was luck. But part of it, I didn't leave yet because in my mind I wanted to go home, but I actually didn't do it. So, like, the doubts were in my head, but I didn't act on it. And that was the point. I was like, man, this is like crazy, man. It's like, I'm not going to make it. But I was hanging out. I was hanging in there trying. I was still trying to put bands together and trying to do stuff and, and try, you know, making calls, even though it wasn't even, you know, we had phones, like landlines, not a cell phone. And I didn't have anything, but I'm like, man, you know, if just something would happen. And all of a sudden, here's four, three guys from Chicago. Well, actually two at the time, the drummer was uh, uh, not, not with us yet, Brad, but he was from Chicago too. We got him later. Three Chicagoans, one Californian, and I ended up moving into a big, beautiful house and being in the band Holland. But the reason is, even in my head, and this is what I'm saying, I was going to quit. I was. In my head, I was like, man, this sucks. But I said to myself, I came out to L.A. for one reason, to be a rock star, to be signed to a major label. And even though I had doubts, I didn't quit. I didn't quit. And if that wouldn't have happened, I am completely confident something else would have. And so that is, on the other side, the world according to Michael. But I can tell you this, how's, as it relates to guitar, if it's a technique you have problems with, here's a visualization idea. Envision yourself playing it. Envision, envision yourself saying, okay, well, I can't play this, I can't play this fast. I can't play this fast. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, yeah! Yes, you can. You can do it if it's in your head. If you have a problem that, that is a physical injury, you have to ask yourself, is it serious? Do I really need to have a doctor look at it or not? You have to know your own body. And, and so it comes down to techniques. It is better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. That's the Michelangelo Badio phrase. Also, always a student. Some of the things that I read online, I really want to comment. You know, I'll give you an example. My new record called More Machine Than Man, I play different than every one of my solo records. I made it a point because as much as I love Yngwie Malmsteen, which I love him to death, I really do, in every way, I don't want to, I have all his CDs, all his albums, start to start. In other words, I hear Ingve on every single record. What I wanted to do is be Michelangelo Badio that makes different phrases, different things from record to record. On More Machine Than Man, my rhythm guitar playing is the best I've ever played, and we left it super dry in your face. It's also hit uh, several Billboard charts, and we'll be showing that very soon. But what I did, my production is different. It's scaled back. Very little keyboards. Rhythms are completely dry. Just try as a seven-string guitar player to play my rhythm parts. See how easy it is. It's not. And then I've always played with melody and I've always played with feel. But what I do is I have this machine-like precision when I play. That's why I called it more machine than man. Guitar World Magazine actually gave me that uh, name. They said Michelangelo Badio is more machine than man. So it's not like I, I'm the self-proclaimed, but a lot of people have done that. You know, there's other artists that have kind of copied that and, and, you know, use, you know, the half cyborg thing. Uh, you know, they're putting it on an album, so they're using it. Well, 
I was given that name. I didn't give it to myself. I'm not the self-proclaimed anything. I was voted the fastest. I didn't vote myself. And, and so, you know, I don't vote myself anything. I just try to be the best MAB that I can be. But my new album is fantastic. And especially if you listen to my records before that, you're like, this is the same guy. This is the same guy that, that can write more machine than man and then write No Boundaries, and then write Planet Gemini, and then do these arrangements of these songs. Did you know you can copyright an arrangement from other people? My version of Randy Rhodes is so different from Randy Rhodes, yet the melodic contour, meaning the, you know. In other words, when you play it, sorry, there was a little bit of a, a there. Uh, when, you, when I play those riffs, they sound like Randy Rhodes, but they're played completely different. It's in my own style. When I play Metallica and I do my own version of my own mashup of it, or what we used to call a medley, it's my own interpretation. So when you consider how different this new record, and, and I had you know a person comment like on the Rat Pack record, oh, well, it's typical MAB, three notes per string this. I'm like, you stupid idiot. And sorry for saying this. I'm like... You can't hear. See, people get jaded. And this is a thing in music that I've never been. I don't listen based on what people say or based on prejudices of the moment. And so, it, and I thought this guy didn't even listen. He didn't listen because if he actually listened to More Machine Than Man, and then people are like, oh, cool drum machine, dude. It's Chris Adler, Lamb of God, Megadeth. Hey, if I can program drums like that, maybe I can. I'm pretty good. Okay, I can do it pretty close. That's Adler, you fool. And so you get these prognosticators. They just want to vent. And this is what I'm saying. This is the thing to avoid to be a better musician. Really critically listen. The next time you listen to my new record, Listen to the nuances of what I'm doing, how intricate it is, and how it sounds like me, but it's different. I have a brand new double guitar solo that's going to be unleashed to the world very soon. I'm going to be playing it on tour if I can ever get on the road again. Uh, and But it's different. But I know the prognosticators are going to go, oh, yeah, the same thing, da, da, da. But it's not. It's completely different from my other one. And again... It's, this is why my methods work. I'm not that person. See, that, and that's why I don't like to comment a lot because what am I going to tell somebody who, who won't even listen, who just judges, oh, it's a drum machine, man, three notes for string, when it is everything but that. How do you tell somebody, you're wrong, dude, or do that? You're wrong. I don't. So I don't comment at all. Or if it was on my page, I just delete it because I... It, and it's under my category of just stupid. And and you can't help stupid. Stupid is stupid. Now, I want to say, so I've talked about the record. You really should check out More Machine Than Man. The production is in your face. If you're a Metallica fan and you know Injustice for All, personally, that production to me was so dry. It was so different than other Metallica albums. I've had some criticisms about the production of my new album. Uh... But I wanted to do it that way for a reason, so you could hear every single note. I'm going to be on tour. I'm going to be playing at least three songs from the new record. And I'm really proud of this album, of my rhythm guitar play. And, and I'm proud of the melodies. I'm proud of the arrangements. I'm proud of Chris Adler, the way he played. Josh Wilbur, the Grammy Award winning uh, producer. Produ not produce. See, there was some... Uh, wrong uh, uh, things in some of the interviews where they called him the producer. He arranged two songs, one called More Machine Than Man, two called The Two Sirens. And so, but there were certain things that I like to do on every record, and I accomplished them always. If you listen to More Machine Than Man, then put on my Inner Mezzo album, then put on Planet Gemini, then put on No Boundaries and Hands Without Shadows, you are going to hear... MAB and a different MAB every record. There are stylistic nuances that I do. And I'm not, and I'm here to tell you.
to critically listen to this because 10 years from now, people are going to go, wow, that's really cool. Just like they did with No Boundaries. You know, man, that song is really cool. I stand by this record and I stand by everything. Now, also to what you've heard me play today is one of my sawtooth signatures. Uh, this is called the M24, 24 frets. It's flat matted black. I love this. Like, look at the back. That's just, look at that. It's just so mean looking. And, and you know what? You know, I love a maple neck. It's super light. It's made out of sycamore. And it's in the $250 price range. Now, I'm going to switch guitars here and play a little bit for you before the end of this uh, clinic tonight. Let's get rid of the strap. This is the M24, and it's a matted white finish. Again, it is a flat finish. It's not shiny. It's bad. This is in the $400 price range. It's going to be available this summer. We have a lot of other signature guitars coming out. Sawtooth is one of the greatest companies on planet Earth. They're part of a conglomerate. Uh, well, not a conglomerate. They're part of three companies. Sawtooth guitars, sawtooth basses, sawtooth drums. And when I'm talking about drums, Vinnie Apice from Dio, from Black Sabbath. His first job as a teenager was John Lennon. He didn't do too bad. His brother Carmine Apice, Carmine Apice, played with Vanilla Fudge, Blue Murder, Ozzy. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, Pat Thoreau. And so he wrote Do You Think I'm Sexy with Rod Stewart, that, that great hit song of Rod Stewart's. But they have Rudy Sarzo on bass, sawtooth musical instruments, and they make amazing acoustics. And their price points are affordable to everybody. They want to bring new people in. And I'm part of this. We want to bring new guitar players in. So it's Sawtooth. Then Chromacast Music Products. They have some of the top 10 biggest selling products on Amazon. Okay, this is not a small company. They are huge. That's second company. Third company, Go DPS Music, the retail store. That's how I met everybody. I did a guitar clinic at the retail store. They are literally one of the most forward-thinking companies on planet Earth. I love the people there. I love everything about the company, the products. Anyway, this is my M24. This has a top-of-the-line German-made Floyd Rose in the $400 category. Now, people, some people are complaining, dude, I went to like the website, man, it was like 600 bucks. They have an upgrade, okay? So that means this guitar comes with sawtooth pickups, but it comes with the top of the line Floyd. If you get an upgrade, meaning all the electronics are switched out, the top of the line, everything, it's in the $600 price range. Nobody can beat that. They can't. Sorry. And, and so, but anyway, this is the M24, and I've had Duncan pickups put in a couple other things. <laughs> sounds killer. And then I'm using a sawtooth 20 watt tube head. Uh, I can't say enough about the company, but uh, they are just absolutely amazing. And uh, so if you get anything out of this tonight, remember, uh, I'm here to help you. And I've given everything that I can give to the guitar community. But guitar playing is it's like life too. 
You know, I have life lessons. Um, I'm older now. And, you know, there, the Indiana Jones movie, you know, said, you know, that, that last one, the crystal skull or whatever, when, they, when one of the guys, uh, the professors talked to Indiana Jones and he goes, we are at the age now where they take things away. And that's not exactly paraphrasing them, but it's close. See, I'm at the age now where stuff is took away, taken away. I mean, even with this coronavirus, I'm at, I'm at an age that's susceptible. But let me tell you a couple of things about my mind, the way I think. One, I have a belief that things will be okay. It's almost like a naive belief. I have faith, okay? And this is not just religious. I have faith in my ability. I look in the mirror sometimes. When, when my mom died, and she was in the hospital, I was on tour, okay? Uh, you don't know what it's like. And I had the owner of my former company die. He was sick, and he was a, a great man. That's why I have nothing to do with that company. Um, they're nothing like they used to be. And, and uh, you know, I said to myself, I don't want to say anything, but you can't even compare the two. It's like this company versus this. The, the old owner that passed away, Elliot, was a great human being. He was a great man, and, and, and he was one of my closest friends. And so, you know, I, I had to watch him pass away, and it happened so fast because he was healthy. Then, you know, my sister passed away. Then my mother passed away. My dad's been gone a long time. I had all this stuff happen. Then I had all these other things. You know when they say, you know, it rains, it pours, or it happens in threes? I had so much stuff happen to me. I was like, and then you don't want to go, God, why me? Why not you? What makes you think you are so different? But I had a close friend of mine, Rob Ross, my best friend, uh, you know, talk to me. You know, he's a counselor. And, and uh, you know, I didn't even want to play guitar. But, I, I, you know, one day the switch went on because I said to myself, wait a second. I stopped working out. I stopped practicing. I stopped momentum on my album. Uh, I, it took about a year. Well, it actually took about six months for my head to get back together. But the point is very simple. I would never, ever say, I know how you feel. I don't know how you feel. I am not you. So I never would tell a human being, I know how you feel. What I, all I can do is think to myself that maybe I've had a similar experience. Maybe your mom has passed away recently or, or, or you don't have a dog anymore. You, I mean, when my dog died, I was like, that was my dog. I mean, I, I still think about my dog, you know. I, I mean, that was like my, my friend, you know, as a family member. You know, I had her when she was a little puppy, you know, bigger than my hand. And, you know, 13 and a half years old, a pit bull shepherd mix. She was mean and smart. I loved her. And she was mean. <laughs> Never met anybody. She's like, I'm in your face and this is my house. And ain't nothing you're going to do. I will rip your head off. I love my dog. And so, you know, I was there when, when, when I, we had to put her to sleep. It was traumatic. But the same thing with guitar. What I've learned over the years is adjust your game. Do what Phil Jackson said. In life, adjust your game. In, adjust your game playing guitar. I mean, when I'm playing that alternate, I'm an alternate picking master. But that one riff, I, was, I actually haven't played that riff in a long time. I'm playing an alternate picking go, this sucks. It sucks. I like it. I like economy better on certain riffs. I have no prejudice against playing. Um, I have all these different books that I go through. Uh, jazz books. I mean, you've seen me play a ukulele, jazz guitar, acoustic guitar, electric. I'm going to be going on tour. I can play 21 shows in a row. I just did it earlier this year. My age doesn't mean nothing. You know why? Here. But also, too, I take care of myself. I go to the gym. I say, look at my face. It's not, you know, I'm not all wrinkly for my age. And, you know, I'm in really good shape. I can still fit in the same clothes I wore 10 years ago. A and so I take care of myself. I take care of my body. And I take care of my mind because, and that doesn't mean I'm a saint. I'm not a saint. I'm not a role model. I never profess to be. You know, I have a beer every once in a while. I'm Italian and German, so I got the beer gene and the wine gene. And I'm going to Europe for five weeks uh, starting November 10th, and I can't wait. I love touring Europe. I love the people I work with over there. I'm going to be touring the United States. In the United States, we have the VIP master class. You've got to go to it. It's amazing. Okay, I can see things about your playing. I don't care if you are a great virtuoso, if you're younger, older, doesn't matter to me. I am not a judge. I offer observations, observations to help you. It's up to you if you want to take them. I come from experience 
and I practice what I preach. I live by what I say. And that's the thing, that's the reason my programs have helped. When I say sawtooth rules, they rule. I'm I have a lot of experience in the music industry. They rule. They are unlike any music company I've ever been with. When I say I left my old company because the old owner died, you can't replace somebody like him. You can have different people. He was, and and the new people that are replaced him are, I mean, you know, Phil Jackson won 11 championships. The old owner of my former company was Phil Jackson. The new regime is not. They haven't won any championships, and they're not going to. And, and this, and Sawtooth will, and Sawtooth has. It's completely different mindset. It's a completely different way of doing business. And, and I have... I'm doing things on signature guitars. Wait till you see what we're coming out with. They're really cool. We built my double guitar that was, we wanted something very different from the past. We did it. And you know how long we did it? It took three and a half weeks from the, from the idea that we were going to do it till the time we finished it. And we're actually even doing a limited run of double guitars that will be available to the public. So in conclusion tonight, Economy versus alternate, not versus. Learn them both. They both have advantages and some disadvantages. You use one or the other to create your music. Two, sawtooth guitars rule. Three, get more machine than man. It is an amazing record, and it, it just the rhythm guitars alone are exercises that can keep seven string guitar players busy for the next six months. Uh, and the last thing, I'm going to be doing a tour of the United States. Get these master classes. Get these VIP master classes. I'm going to be doing my brand new double solo there. I'm going to be doing songs from the new record. It's an amazing concert experience that's also educational. And I'm crazy in concert. I say really funny, cool stories. So bring your girlfriend or your wife. It's not just for guitar players. It's an entertaining show. I actually talk and say some really cool, funny stories about my life in rock and roll. And so, um, you know, and so I hope you got something out of this today. I always like to mix up these uh, Facebook live chats, but I cannot say enough about the people I represent. I cannot say enough about um, what I've experienced and it makes me feel good to be able to know that I can help you. Anyway, thanks. I'm Michelangelo Badia for Sawtooth Musical Instruments, for Chromacast Musical Products, and Godi PS Music. Practice, practice, practice.